Welcome to the seventh video in the reinforced concrete design based on Eurocode 2. In a previous video, I've mistakenly announced it as the seventh. I was wrong, it was six. This is the seventh. Sorry if you're confused. This is the textbook. In this video, we look at what will happen when we combine all the forces. Let us start with the fundamentals we learned in the previous videos. 1. Structures are subjected to various types of loadings or actions. These actions can happen in various combinations. In Eurocode 2, when we use these combined forces, actions or actions, we multiply them with a factor psi. What is psi? It works the opposite way from the partial factor of safety. When multiple actions are combined, we can take a discount from their total act, meaning we can consider lesser. There are three types. The first is the, is the combination of ver variable actions which we denote as psi naught. The second is the frequent value of variable actions which, which we denote as psi 1. And finally, the quasi-permanent values of variable actions, which we denote as psi 2. Let me explain in detail. The first one, psi naught, is something we use as if we have more when, when we have more than one variable action. We use it because we want to ensure the probability of a combination of actions being exceeded is approximately the same as a single action. And Finally, we use it for designing the ultimate limit state and irreversible serv serviceability states such as re irreversible cracking. The second one is called the frequent values of variable actions or psi 1. It is used for involving accidental actions. Also for the reversible limit states such as the serviceability limit states of cracking and deflection such as actions causing these effects are in short transitionary nature. Third, we have the quasi-permanence value of variable actions or psi 2. Quasi-permanent are actions that may be sustained over a long period but are not necessarily permanent. For example, snow. Now we find you may find that all this to be confusing, but here is an easy way out. To do that, let me show you the whole table of the value of psi. This is the whole table of the value of psi not 1 and 2. Let's look at these values. Psi 1 has the psi not has the biggest value, followed by psi 1, which is smaller. And psi 2 is the smallest. So if you do not know which psi to use, then choose psi naught, which is the biggest. In doing so, you are playing safe. Next, we are looking, we are look at the numbers in the rows. For category A and B, we find the numbers to be the same. This means residential and office building, buildings have the same loading pattern. Category C and D are also identical. The numbers are bigger than A and B for psi 1 and 2, which is understandable because congregation and shopping areas have higher human traffic than residential and office buildings. In category E for storage area, we have the highest value of psi in all three versions. Storage areas means you have a lot of heavy stuff sitting there for a long time. So naturally, you, have, you expect lesser discount for these loadings. We have two categories for traffic area. However, the category for heavier vehicles seem to, be small, seem to have smaller values. Category, category H is for roof. Here, only sign not is available. For snow loading, we have two different sets of numbers based on the altitudes. For sites above 1,000 meters, the numbers are bigger. 
which could be due to the fact that the higher the altitude, the more the snow will fall. Finally, we have the wind loads. Now that we have gone through all the value of psi, let me show you how to use them. Let's try to look at a building that looks like this. Our task is to check the, bu the building against the risk of toppling. The first step is to look at the permanent action or cell weight of the structure. In this building, there are two, two parts of permanent action that contribute to the, to the opposite way. The one in yellow contributes to the stability of the structure against toppling. The other part happens to make things worse. In fact, this is the part that makes it easier for the building to topple. Since the yellow part is favorable to the structure, and if you, if you can remember the previous video, we multiply the permanent load with 0 0.9. We factor it lesser because we want to play safe. While for the other side, we factor it with a bigger number. We get 1.1 GK. Now that we're finished with the permanent loads, we turn to life loads. For life loads, refer to weights that move around in the building, like people. The question is, where can the people inside the building move to in order to make things worse? The answer is, when everybody moves to the right side of the building. Then you will have the life load that looks like this. Here, all the life load is at the right side. Is this possible in the real world? Just imagine that there is something nice on the right side, like a parade of fireworks. Then everybody will move to the right side. In doing so, they are creating the worst case scenario for toppling. You will also notice that there is a 1.5 factor on the life load. This is a partial factor of steady for life load explained in the previous video. To make things even worse, let us add in some wind. Let me ask you this, which direction should the wind blow in order to increase the risk of toppling? The answer, from left to right. Note that the wind load also has the partial factor of safety of 1.5. Now that we have the worst possible scenario that creates the highest risk of the building toppling. But that is not the end, because we have now two wearable loads. We have the combinations of life and wind loads. In this scenario, the code requires us to factor the value of psi. Which factor should we stick psi to? It depends on which of the loads do we choose as a leading variable action. If we choose wind load as a leading variable action, then we have to multiply the other load, which is the life load, by the value of psi, which is in this case is 0.7. If we choose the life load as a leading variable action, then the wind load will be multiplied by psi, which is 0 0.7. Let us now put both scenarios side by side. We are now looking at the two different models of the life loads and wind loads. The next step is to calculate for both situations to find out which one creates the highest overturning moment. Then we use the larger one to design for stability. Of course, if you choose to ignore the 0 0.7, you can get the answer faster and the design to be stronger. The only drawback is that the developer will have to spend more money. On the other hand, if you are a developer, you might want to check whether your engineer uses psi in his or her load estimates because psi saves money. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.